Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on my video. Today I'm going to talk about how this homeowner saved himself $2,304 on this concrete slab. But right now I just want to talk about the mix design we're using. We're using a 4000 PSI mix design today because it's getting really chilly outside. The concrete's got warm water in it. It's got water reducer in it. So if you're wondering, you slump police out there, <laughs> If you're wondering why the slump is pretty loose, it's because we're using water reducer. That's the key to getting these slabs in and poured really fast, not having to work yourself too hard. And then we got some accelerator in the concrete too. And if you're also wondering why there's no rebar or wire in the slab, we pour slabs like this on top of really good gravel sub bases that are compacted really well all the time with a lot of success. The key is having a really good, well compacted gravel sub base. And then we use microfiber mesh in the concrete for reinforcement. That's all the homeowner wanted. So the homeowner himself, he's a builder. Like he built the house in the background. That's his house. He also builds really nice top end homes for other people too. So what we did was we explained to him how we like to have our concrete slabs formed. We like, you know, if it's a six inch slab, you just use two by sixes if you want. You can hang them up off the ground just a little bit to get your six inches thick. We, we taught him how to screw them together, how we like them screwed together really nice and, and tight, how to set them to grade, how to pin them, how to square them. So he basically learned how to form up this concrete slab just like we would, just like I would teach you in the concrete underground or in my concrete slab course if you're looking to do a slab you know on your own or maybe not maybe not quite this big as far as pouring and finishing for your first one but maybe something smaller i teach you the same methods that this homeowner used to save himself twenty three hundred and four dollars in the concrete underground in my concrete slab course so this was really formed up perfectly he used a laser to set him to grade i checked him with my laser the top of the forms are, you know, they're basically within a sixteenth of an inch as far as being level. That's just about as good as you're going to get them with a laser and, you know, human error. Um, so we, we can mag float the edges right off top of the forms. We can screed right off top of the forms if we want. The metal pins he drove down below, just below the top of the forms, so they're not in the way of, of any uh, screeding we might want to do if we want to hang the screed up over the edge of the form. And as you can see, you know, right now Luke's mag floating the edges, so we can use the, what we call, that's what we call like a wet pad in the concrete. We can use the mag floated area to screed off from, and then I have the laser, the self-leveling laser I'm using with a receiver and a grade stick, and I'm shooting my wet pads in the middle, and those are the exact same level or height as the top of the form. So this slab is just going to be flat. It's going to end up being a big barn. So he doesn't really need the floor pitched or anything like that. It doesn't really need a floor drain in it. Um, you just, you know, it's just going to be a big barn for storage and probably for horses. They have a bunch of horses here too. Really nice view, as you can see. The sun's just starting to come up. It's really early in the morning. It's about 6:30 a.m. Now this is the the slab pouring technique or the system that we always use to pour our concrete slabs. There's a certain system, there's certain steps we go by. And obviously the first step is just what I talked about. It's why, why this homeowner was able to save himself over $2,000 was just because of the way he formed up the slab and getting everything right to grade, everything square, everything pinned nice and tight. That's basically, you know, for us, that's step number one. For him, it was, it was digging out whatever he had here previously for soil, digging that out a couple feet, adding a couple feet of gravel, uh, compacting it in layers, getting it nice and level and compacted really hard, and then you know setting his forms on top of that compacted gravel sub-base. So then, you know, step one, basically getting the slab formed up the way we like it. Step two for us is ordering the concrete, setting the date, Hopefully the weather works out, which it did today. And then, you know, the concrete truck shows up, hopefully on time, and we get the concrete truck poured out just like we did. That was 10 yards of concrete right there. So get the truck, get the concrete poured out. And we like pouring the whole truck out, but that's only because, you know, we're really experienced. We do it every single day. 
this is something you're doing on your own you may not want to pour the whole truck out like this you do get about seven minutes a yard usually before they start charging you for extra time you may only pour out a bay what Luke is Luke's running the the battery screed right now from MBW the screed demon that's what we call a bay right there so about 12 feet wide by however distance that was that's a bay now you may only want to pour out one bay get it screeded pour out your second bay get it screeded and then you have, if you have any more concrete left on the truck just pour out that last section and do it in smaller sections if you're if you're kind of new to this or not very experienced that way you don't get too far ahead of yourself especially you know if you're doing it in the cold weather and you got accelerators in the concrete the you uh, you only have so much time really to get it down before that concrete starts setting up on you so after we after we use the battery screed on our wet pads you know I'm coming that's me bow floating I'm coming right behind with the bow float and you can see how nice and easy it is to bow float using that water reducer in the concrete with the right slump basically I'm just down and back once and that is really nice and smooth now we're gonna end up power troweling this to a really smooth power trowel finish today and we'll saw cut our joints in it today it's gonna it's gonna end up curing up fast enough for that and then what the what the homeowner is going to do you kind of see the barn in the background that's actually a wedding barn that that they built that's a pretty big barn and you know people rent that space to do weddings so they're just going to have their own personal barn here now it's probably going to kind of match that one so they can you know have a place to put their horses now <laughs> now that they converted the other one into a wedding barn so he anyway he's going to end up putting these these thick rubber mats on top of the concrete where the horses are going to be so he just wanted us to power trial everything smooth you know just in case some somewhere down the line they they stop having horses and he just wants to use it for some type of garage floor the concrete will at least be nice and smooth so we're getting the second truck poured out now again another 10 i think it was 10 10 and a half yards on each truck same mixed design same water reducer, same microfiber, same slump. We like to get them, you know, both mixes as far as if you got two trucks or if you got three trucks, we like to get the slumps just about the same as we can. So when we go to finish, the power trial it ends up it ends up curing at about the same rate or the surface dries up at about the same rate, makes the power trial just that much easier down the road. So again, the truck shows up, you know, if we're going to put accelerator in him, we, we put it in on site and have him mixed to the slump we want. We check it. If it's not at the right slump, hope, hopefully he can just add just a little bit of water and get it up to the slump that we want it to. And then again, pour out what we need to pour out. We know that with the four of us here, we can get this screeded down in just a matter of a couple minutes. So it's the screeding really is one of the quickest parts of the pour. Actually pouring the concrete out like this takes probably the longest, you know, not going not going too too fast so you get it piled up too high or or you or actually you get it too low, which is worse. You just want to go at a quick enough rate so you guys rake in the concrete, you know, they can kind of use their eye to go by the top of the form and then when I come right behind them shooting my pads like this, then that gives them something to go by in the slab. There's other ways you can put pads. You know, you could set a metal pin in here and put a nail through it at grade. Um, there's a bunch of other ways you could get grades set inside. But this is what we call just wet padding with a, with a laser screed. Now what I'm doing is I'm wet setting a couple rows of rebar around the outside edge. This is what the homeowner wanted us to do. Just wet set it, tap it down a couple inches. Make sure it's below grade, and you know he's going to end up form uh, building some two by six walls on top of this. And yes, the edges are going to be thick enough to support the weight of the barn. We, I mean, I've done hundreds of slabs like this, six inch slabs like this over the years, never having any trouble with them as long as the gravel sub base is done right, compacted well. You're not going to have trouble with a six inch slab is going to be plenty strong enough to support the weight of a barn like this you know especially whether it's one story or a story and a half plenty strong enough the, the, the sub base is really key here and then 
a lot of the slabs we did, I remember years ago when it first started out, a lot of the slabs we did for garages like this were just foreign slabs on a really hard sub base. So I never remember having any callbacks or any trouble with those either. Nowadays, it's all these, you know, really thickened edge slabs, two feet thick on the edges, and they taper up to either four inches in the middle or six inches in the middle. And yes, we do a, we do a bunch of those still, but you know this was the old-fashioned way right here of doing concrete slabs years ago. And some guys, you know, the code in this town, this is all they require for a, you know a basic garage slab or a barn slab, basically is what it is. And we put down a vapor barrier when we showed up this morning, the poly vapor barrier, and then. Go right to town pouring the concrete so basically you know the system is pour out the concrete shoot the pads mag your edges get it screeded using either the power screed or the hand screed either way if you don't have a vibra screed like we do you can still hand screed it just the same and then get it bowl floated and then you know move on to the next truck if you got multiple trucks but that's the system and we call like like I said earlier in the video, each section, like the board on the Viber screed or the hand screed we got is 14 feet long. The board on the Viber screed is 12 feet long. So each section, that's kind of how I shoot my pads in about 12 foot sections. So the board can reach each pad in the middle. I don't want to go any wider than what our screed board is. And then that's basically as simple as it is to make a wet pad in there using the laser level. You know, the receiver just beeps, tells me when I'm right at the right level I need to be at. And then the boys can strike off the pads just like this. Very simple. You know, just striking off using the, the wet pad that I set with the laser and then the previous part that they screeded. So that's really nice and level right there. Gives us something to go by. Again, striking off another pad. Breaking up the slab into smaller sections for the screed and this is this is how we do all our slabs like this we basically do our concrete floors like this all our flat work and, and you know break each thing up into, into mini sections is what we call it this total slab was 36 by 32 so the way the homeowner saved himself twenty three hundred and four dollars is basically when I when I price out a concrete slab, a lot of the things that I price it out by is by the square foot. And forming it with two by sixes like this, I basically charge $2 a square foot just to do the forming part. So to show up, two by sixes, you know, get them screwed together at the right lengths, get them, get them square, get them pinned, get them set to grade, that's two bucks a square foot. So if you take 36 by 32, multiply that out, and then multiply that times two comes up to 2304 so that's what I knocked off the bill when I when I sent the the builder the bill for installing the concrete slab so I basically just installed him for the concrete the he had the rebar there himself so basically just the concrete the labor to pour it and finish it and that's it so you know that's quite a bit of money really to save yourself on a concrete slab like this he can use that two thousand bucks for you know whatever else he wants building materials or windows or doors or whatever so you can see when the, when we when we screed using uh you know a vibrating screed like this the guy with the screed basically is looking back and forth from left to right making sure that both edges of the screed are touching he leaves a little bit of a line in the concrete with the edges if it if it shows that it's not leaving a line that means he's riding a little bit high on the concrete so he's got to stop you know set back and and do that little section again and then he just doesn't want to as as he's giving it some uh, throttle the screed board starts to vibrate so he doesn't want to stop in one area and just and just leave it vibrating it's going to sink into the concrete a little bit but as he's as he's pulling it back like this and he's vibrating he can give it as much throttle or as little throttle as he needs just to get the concrete, you know, screeded and leveled out like this based on based on him leaving that line on the edge of the board. You can see it pretty good right there on the left side of the video. 
really the most of the work is done by the two rakers they're actually both the rakers that's luke on the right and that's young luke on the left of the video and it's it's really their job to make sure the concrete's raked at the right level so darren when he pulls it back you know he's not struggling to pull it back and he can keep that screed board nice and flat there it's their job to fill in any low areas and then pull down the high so darren really only wants to be pulling back maybe like a half inch of concrete like a roll right behind the screed if they if you let it build up too much you know some of that concrete could vibrate right under the screed and leave a little hump in the concrete and you not notice it the guy who's going to notice it really is the guy that's doing the bow floating so you'll see that in a second now there was a little like low area right there from darren's boots darren's trying to fill in his boot tracks as he's pulling this back and sometimes you know sometimes that's that's hard to do so the two guys raking should be, all, like Luke did right there, push a little bit up right after Darren steps backwards. He can push a little bit of concrete up where he pulled his boot out, and that keeps that nice and nice and filled up right there. So as he screeds back over his boot tracks, it doesn't leave any small holes or low areas like that. I teach all this in detail in the Concrete Underground, so if you want to learn more about you know, all these different uh, types of techniques that we use that's all in the concrete underground there's multiple training videos in there so make sure you check that out there's a link for it down in the, the show more section or the description of the video so you can see after we pull that after we pour out that concrete the concrete driver now just waits like he shouldn't be in a big hurry to get back or he shouldn't be hurrying you unless you're going really really slow and you know you're over your allotment of how many minutes you get to pour out per yard so you got to take that into consideration when you're doing something like this you got to make sure you have enough help you got to make sure you have enough knowledge to kind of have an idea of what you're doing but for us you can see just nice and patient um, doesn't take us very long to get 10 yards of concrete poured out maybe 10 minutes and then even less time to get it screeded and get it bowl floated. So he's just staring there waiting. Now we don't fill the whole slab up and then tell him just to go wash out. We wanna make sure that we don't have too much concrete in there. It's possible we could be a little bit high. And if we are, we wanna be able to rake it back into that low area we got right where the end of the chute is. We leave, it, we leave the area just a little bit low. If we get it way too high and we fill that up, then we're shoveling it out. And then there's big piles of concrete on the outside of the slab that someone's got to deal with later on. And that's all, that always leaves a mess. So I hate leaving a mess on the job site with concrete. Now I'm going right back and forth with the bull flow. You can see it's just basically down and back. Nice. It fills in nice and smooth after that. After the vibrating screed with the slump that we use. Bull floating is probably one of the easier things there is to do. And we like when like when we bull float, we like a nice smooth surface like you see right there. You're always going to have a few lines on the edge of the bull float. The rounded bull float, like the one we use, the four foot one with the rounded edges, leaves a, a lot less of a deeper line than the square edged bull floats do, in my experience. That's why we use the rounded one. And if you want to bull float both ways, like I'm going all the way down that edge right now, um, and then I can cross my bull float patterns if I want to, and that just helps flatten the slab out even more. You don't have to. The power trial, you know, if you know how to run a power trial in uh, the right patterns, and I teach that in the in the concrete underground, then that's going to help flatten the slab out too as you power trial it. Now this gives you a really good good view of you know the bull floating and just how nice and flat it is under there after using that vibrating screed you know, if you know how to run that screed right and you got two really good rakers you can get a really nice flat slab let me know down in the comments like where you guys are from if you've ever run a vibrating screed like this if you've ever poured a concrete slab let me know those kinds of things if you will if you want to learn how to do that uh, if you need help with that, if you got any questions or comments, you know, just leave them down there. We can talk about that down there. If, if I can provide any help with you, any links for you, I'll do that. 
So, you know, Darren just picks the screed up. We like to get it washed down really good. We scrub it down with a brush, and then I'm going to come right behind him, finish up with a bull float. And then one last step when we do a slab like this. Most, most people, when they do a slab, they want a way to fasten down the, the sill plate or the walls of the slab. So we'll install some anchor bolts for them right after we get done bull floating. And... You know, we'll just sink them down in the concrete. I'm going to show you here in just a second. We're going to, we'll sink them down in the concrete. So a lot of times we'll ask the builder or the homeowner, whoever's building the slab, just, you know, how high they want the anchor bolt sticking up, how far apart they want them, if they have any special, special places they want them. We definitely need to know where the doorway openings are so we don't put any anchor bolts in the doorways. But sinking in a, an anchor bolt is really pretty simple once you watch you know Luke's gonna I'm gonna show you it's gonna be off in a distance a little bit I didn't get a super close-up shot of it but these we use uh, six inch anchor bolts you can use eight inch ten inch twelve inch depending on how thick your edges are the only thing we gotta worry about is not hitting that double roll rebar that we put in there as we sunk that rebar down in around the edges so here's Luke Luke's gonna be sinking this anchor bolt in right here you just kinda Pushes it down in, jig jiggles it a little bit, and the concrete fills in around it, and that's it. So there we go, guys. That's the slab. Thanks for watching.